After two and a half months, we have finally oh. gathered up to talk about Range DPS and Mythic Plus in a very, very special edition of TLF, which stands for Tier List Friday. And uh, we are looking at the meta changes that we haven't touched in a while because things change and sure, the next season is going to come really close. However, as opposed to the last TLF we did for Range the Mythic Plus, I'm pretty sure a lot of these specs will look totally different in the rankings i think the last one was in like the 21st of january was, uh, and we did good. a lot of mythic plus since then and we kind of know what, what's happening oh around. dude like i was i've been playing my devastation like way more and recently, <laughs> yeah. and and also kind of made, made it since when uh, made it clear when we also did the research for this but devastation really likes power infusion man no and we we kind of Listen, that's not that strange, but we do have a couple of priests in our community, and I can't, if they give me power infusion, my my dragon rage is basically almost three times as long the duration, which is very nuts. However, they just weren't giving me the power infusion. Like, oh, it's on cooldown. What do you mean it's on cooldown? How do you mean it's on cooldown, man? <laughs> and I was like, okay, listen, listen, it's fine. I, you know, got uh, Omni CD. I think it's the one because they have a whole bunch, and this one actually shows your cooldowns on the party frames. Oh and yeah, it shows yeah, yeah. the power infusion cooldown, and it's like, I see you have it. I see you have. It popping now. I want to blast, man. It just makes your damage way better. And obviously, you can get all of this with the Curse Forge app. Click the link down in the description. You'll be supporting us and you'll have access to some really cool add ons to be, do more damage, man. Because what, what else is more important yeah, and, than overall and Get DPS. those add ons to know when Power Fusion is up and ask for everybody around you when you're on Devastation. Not only on Devastation, on everybody else. So, thank you, Curse Forge, for sponsoring the video as always. And by the way, you know, Overwolf is also part of the big charity. Pro Am event. Yes, yeah, it's like a, it's like a tournament that supports, I think, about six charities. Oh uh, yeah. Which, which I mean, it's always nice when we can connect the gaming to giving back to the community and to the world in a really nice way. And obviously, if you like Mythic Plus, you should definitely check the link, which we'll have it also in the description. Yeah, it's and in the description. Check the details over there. I believe the signups are uh, done for, but the event will start off on the fifteenth uh, of April. So do sure. check it out now. It's time to look oh. at the tier list for range DPS, and we have to start it off with as, the... As uh, always, as always, listen, this is actually a good, a good spec to start with because we do have a big fat disclaimer. So we have like 10,000 disclaimers every TLF, and that's fine. Too many disclaimers. However, um, actually the meta is starting to like round up, and we're kind of seeing like a soft cap in terms of how people are increasing their uh, their their key levels. I mean, you, there's only so far you can climb, right? There's no more gear to get. Everybody has been full level for a while. And now we're kind of seeing like uh, top specs kind of stagnating. And with Affliction, which unfortunately we kind of have to place it in C tier because it still has some issue. But with it being in C tier, it is clearing plus 26. Yes, this is the main the main factor here. As we did with the melee tier list, we are looking like, like at the highest keys that these specs have cleared. And we are seeing Affliction is clearing a lot of uh, uh, 26s and stuff, and yeah, it's still amazing in AoE with Seed of Corruption spam, that's all fine and dandy. It is a bit too much relying on Dark Lair, you know, for yeah. big pulls uh, to get that damage in, that's fair. This as opposed to some other specs that can access their big damage much faster and not as reliant on some specific external factors. I mean, so, obviously we're looking at logs of 26 keys that Affliction is doing, and because they are doing it, however, the, most of them are with like a gazillion power infusions, I think. Uh, the top ones that we've seen had about 12 or 16 overall power infusions dunked into Affliction, and even with that, it was yeah. kind of still you, You're gonna see this team a lot. Yeah, which, which is why which is why we kind of kept it into C tier, because it wasn't like fully on its own. Yes, yes. Okay, next on the list, we have the Boomkins. Obviously, great performance in Mythic Plus. They, they can do a lot of AoE damage, and we sure. are talking about super high keys, so we cannot have that argument though, but it takes the ramp up, is really uh, annoying and stuff. Yes, it is annoying, but when you have bobs lasting for as long as they do in high keys, then the damage is really, really up. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, that's so. usually good because balance actually really suffers in small keys. If you've seen your your local neighborhood balance druid not doing more than tank damage, I know. <laughs> um, yeah. It's probably usually because the key is a little bit too low. However, it is one of the best AOE damage dealers in the game. It will, however, still struggle with single target because it seems like it's a trend with some of these specs. Oh, yeah. But it is uh, taken into pretty much all of the top keys right now. It's doing 27s. I would imagine we might get into 28s by the time the season is over. But until then, this is kind of where 
the top S tier yeah. specs are uh, kind of hanging out. No surprise, we have to place it in S tier because it's up there, right? There's, the, there's no denying Boomkins are here to stay. Let's move along to a former <sighs> dominator, I would Arr say, the Arcane Mage, uh, who uh, hasn't seen the mm. best. Well, dude, Fire Mage has risen a lot. Okay, Fire Mage. Uh, remember our first like analysis on the meta and the logs and stuff with Fire Mage wasn't almost at all there. Oh, Arcane was, Mage was, was everywhere. It was like next to Affliction, I believe, or somewhere near yeah, the vicinity. Yeah, Fire Mage sucked at the beginning, right? But um, now we're looking at Arcane Mage, who like... Like it's in the range of twenty fives. Uh, it's it's still about there. I think it's doing like overall more keys. I think Affliction is still struggling in some twenty fours. Hasn't done all of the twenty fives and twenty sixes yeah. yet, which is why Arcane is maybe slightly better. But at the end of the day, they're both C tier specs. Arcane yeah. is basically a good example as to why it's very hard to be a caster this season. You have to plant your feet and cast a lot. You're very restricted to. You're very punished rather by having to move a lot. And we know that you have to move a lot to stop cast a lot. And we'll see this trend over a course of other specs as well and even with that it's it feels decent it might not require the ram that boomkin does though no, so for, no, for sure but it's still the, the biggest problem is like but what, what you mentioned is like you have to like be like a sitting turret over there and that is not the best scenario for mythic plus like this high end mythic plus bro. so it, it will be a c tier but regardless still 24s 25s still a very important spec regardless of anything Moving to Beast Mastery, Beast Mastery. Hunter. Uh, right off the bat, we can say that this is probably the best uh, boss killer in Mythic oh, Plus. Oh, for sure. I, I mean, mean it, I think it still retains the best single target damage in the game currently, even after the bow nerfs, because uh, it also got uh, single target buffs. It got some nerfs, and it's still one it's of still, the best. Still one of the best, um, for sure. And it's it's kind of nice because it's kind of in direct opposition to Boomkin, where Boomkin has, like, big giga AoE. Uh, BM has, like, giga single target, so they kind of, like, fill each other's weaknesses in that sense. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. It's, it's also like if they have the bow, they have like super utility with the, well, hunters have a lot of utility, but you also have the AOE silence, you know, that's also pretty good. I mean, it doesn't have like giga burst AOE, but it's AOE, like it's still no decent, man. And it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's good. It's, it's consistent. It's nice. It's safe. It's, you know. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I would say it's a very respectable A tier. Yeah. It's uh, still really no, good. No, no questions asked. Once again, if you're looking at like tyrannical weeks, you're going to see a lot of BMs. Pump, you're going to love your BMs numbers. there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next up, we have Demonology Warlock. Another spec that is kind of like uh, working its way 25s and 26 keys. It has decent AoE, very tanky, so I guess you're going to be happy with a Demon Lock as a healer because, you know, it has a lot of ways to, to survive and stuff. For sure. It's, I it's, think it, it sucks on single target though. Yeah, it's so basically it's like a budget balanced druid or a budget, I'm not going to say, other specs that are pretty high that do really good in AoE, but they kind of really struggle in single target. Mostly because Demonology actually doesn't realistically have that many single target issues because you can spec into it with other specs like Bunzer, you cannot. Um, so it's not that bad. Of course, if you have like a full AOE blasting team and you're the Demon Lock, you can also go a little bit more single target to try to take that boss down. So it's not the end of the world. However, even with all of that and with all the damage that you pump, it's kind of like middle of the pack. Yeah. I think B tier is, uh, yeah. is where, where, where it should stand for now. Now, on the other hand, uh, we do have here Destruction Warlock. And man, what a journey. You guys remember Destruction Warlocks being like in the, at the, the, the bottom of the puddle and stuff? Well, we see a lot of logs with 27s uh, on Destruction Warlock. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's one, of, it's one of the best right now. I mean, um, even though Bounce Read might have the biggest AoE in the game currently, Destruction has AoE that just doesn't stop yeah, scaling. It's, it's like if, it, if, 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 you, if the fight lasts for 30 minutes, uh, Destruction will always do more and more and more damage. But it does require the tank to like like know how to pull and basically have like... Yeah. Low, mobs need to stay in that brain of fire. If, if for some reason that doesn't <laughs> happen, then Destruction uh -oh. becomes a very weak spec. But obviously, when we're looking at these logs, they know what they're doing. These, these are yeah, like ordinary sure. I mean, comps and teams. And it might be harder to make destruction work. Yeah, like if like this is the thing, right? So when we rank this, you see something like destruction warlock like clearing 27s. How how the fuck is when you play with a destruction warlock, like it doesn't really do that much. Well, yeah, because in order for destruction to do well, the pools need to be made in a specific way. But 
uh, and on top of that, this is basically the, the front of A tier. And I know it's like maybe some unexpected news for some people, but again, <laughs> looking at Second the high the keys, you're going to see the performance there. It's kind of like bonkers, okay? For sure. It's, 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 it's still a solid. We haven't seen these many specs in a while that were very specific in terms of pulls, but if you do manage to get a good group going, yeah. this is what you can do with destruction. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Don't judge this till it's based on your experience in 15s, 16s, and 20s. It's not about that, okay? Let's talk about <sighs> the Fire Mage, because we did mention it earlier, and Fire Mage... Times change. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> well, it was bound to happen, because this was... And this Fire Mage was kind of always a beloved spec for Mythic Plus, especially, like, pushing high keys. Again, we're looking at 26, 27s, no problem. Or here, it's like, you know, great AoE damage, great single target, but I think in terms of casters, this is, like, the highest burst you can have, or probably among the highest. I mean, combustion uh, is pretty nuts, no matter what you do in the video game, and it's clearing some of the highest keys right now. It's back to kind of similar, the uh, BFA playstyle where Ignite is just doing most, if not all of your damage, especially yeah. in AoE, definitely spreads. They're not playing the old flame strike anymore, and it is good, although... It's, listen, it's one of the best caches in the game, but you do require a lot of power infusion, and that's normally not an issue, because in the top keys, the highest of the highest keys, you definitely have a priest somewhere, Oh yeah. because oh, yeah. it's Either just really that strong. Yeah. yeah. Listen, there are a couple logs with 28 keys on Fire Mage, but this is like, you know, with giga power infusion, like 12 or 6 power infusions up, so we, we cannot really, like just make make the decision okay fire mage is the best because it cleared 28s when that mage have was like pumped up to the teeth with power all, all the, all but the it's power still power. an s tier okay so it, there's no question about it now frost mage on the other hand i mean still still very good i would say among the top echelon of the casters because there's a, a lot of locks with with like plus 27s like really really cool it's actually surprising that it's not doing that bad i mean compared to how our king kind of fell we can honestly say that frost is doing a little bit better it feels really good oh, listen i i I've, I've tried to figure out exactly what's going on with frost mage i couldn't <laughs> find like any outstanding bad things or amazing things it's really good it does really high consistent damage i think it's let's say if i would have to give it like a criteria it's the safe mage spec to play in any keys yeah yeah it's like consistent and that's one of the key reasons like if you want to play frost mage and are become like a master at it you'll probably dominate no problemo but in terms of like the rankings here yeah decent aoe decent single single target not as bursty as fire it's still an a tier spec For just sure. because of For like sure. the multiple logs on 27 keys marksmanship on the other hand I don't think I've seen a 27 log, but 26, um, definitely all up there. Yeah, not an interesting fact about Marksman, yeah. right? <laughs> um, actually, um, we, we all know that uh, the, the president, the overlord, <laughs> the Mike Barra, is also a fan of Mythic Plus, and uh, this season he's playing Marksmanship. I've caught him on stream a couple of times. Yeah. He's actually ranked the fourth in the world Marksmanship Hunter, <laughs> which is actually really cool, yeah. because... The marksmanship is doing really well. If everybody d uh, designing specs would, you know, play at this level, we could Dude, probably see a whole listen, new world. You didn't see Jay Allen Brack in any ranking. <laughs> you didn't see Mike Morheim. I think you would want to see him, but uh, I think I think Mike Morheim maybe would have been in the StarCraft ladder because I know he played a lot of StarCraft. Yeah. But regardless, a uh, marksman uh, does have super AOE burst, and this is again very important, similar to like Frost, uh, not Frost, Fire, Fire Mage. Mage. Yeah, sure. um, it is like I don't know where to place it as opposed to like like the same utility as a hunter but in terms of like the damage profile from bm can it compare with the bm single target not no really. no nothing it's, can it's like it's it like has better bad. aoe however the marksmanship aoe is maybe like a kind of in juxtaposition with the balance druid because it doesn't require any ramp it's highly explosive very quick and it starts to slowly drop off as the fight goes on because everything is basically baked into volley and salvo which is really good you do like really really awesome aoe but it's, it's like burst for a couple of seconds, right? And as opposed to other specs in low keys, you might actually have a great time with marksmanship. You might even solo the entire packs all on your own if you're like decently geared. But uh, the higher the keys go, the longer the fights go, especially on Tyrannical, you'll probably see marksmanship drop a little bit too low for normal comfort, which is probably kind of middle of the pack. Yeah, stuff. it's still a B tier. Yeah, similar to like Demo Lock, you know. It, it, it has, as opposed to Demo Lock, it does have the AOE burst. However, single target is kind of poo-poo in compared to the other poo -poo. specs. So we'll uh, keep it in B tier. All right, <clears throat> Devastation. Uh, Devastation. You, well, you played Devastation. In oh yeah. Plus. You mentioned it. You want that PI too, <laughs> dude? Like I cannot even start to explain to you how different the spec is 
if you have PA, it's like you have three offensive cooldowns instead of one. It's yeah. not even the same <laughs> thing. And obviously, the majority of devastations that are pushing the highest of keys have um, one priest or another in their party. Because otherwise, it just feels uh, whack. However, one thing that I can say that goes well for devastation is that you don't really sacrifice too much in terms of single target. And single target is poop. It's poop for a lot of uh, specs, but where Balanced Druid and Shadow Priest might sacrifice it, Devastation doesn't lose that much. You might even be able to do more than Shadow Priest and Balanced Druid in single target, which is kind of like a, a good thing to have when you always think like, oh my god, the Tyrannical Week is coming, I cannot play this week. Maybe not as much with Devastation, yeah. but you're still squishy, man. Yeah, yeah, this is the problem. Even with the HP buffs, it's still super squishy and so punishable if you like. You, you have to play it perfectly unless you die, right? Yeah. And like, listen, I was like very tempted to put it into C tier just because you you know, you you see how much it relies on power infusion to be able to perform. Yeah, well, well, I guess that's fair for, for mages but, as well. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll place it in, in at the end of uh, B tier. Uh, again, we're looking at 25 keys uh, in terms of like the log, so it's not like the, the highest keys pushed over there, sure. but still very viable nonetheless. Now, a surprise here with Elemental man, Shaman. What a big surprise, man. What the hell man. happened, man? I don't know. I mean, they, they've received some buffs over the course of the last couple of months because there's been a while since we've yeah, done this. It was uh, in January. A, a, meta, yeah. a meta analysis. And like I was looking at some logs and I, just, I couldn't, where is this? What, what's going on? Elemental actually does damage. And I did criticize it before saying that it's probably one of the specs that needs some damage buffs the most. But it did receive some yeah, like, incremental, it did, but over yeah, the yeah. course of uh, two and a half months, uh, it did have like its damage profile bumped up a notch. And this is definitely uh, shown in the logs. I mean, look, looking at like logs for Elemental Shaman, you're going to see a lot of 27s higher than you would see on Arcane and Affliction. So, And what's, what's actually cool, if you actually look at some of the builds, although they don't differ too much, you can see a lot of Lava Burst Focus builds that obviously are going to be good in single target as well, but also Earthquake Focus builds or Damage Profiles rather. And they, they seem to be able to handle Mythic Plus Damage Profile a little bit better than than Balanced Druid, where Balanced Druid uh, is basically just giga stupid in AoE, so stupid that it doesn't matter that it does almost poop single target. Yeah. Uh, Elemental is more it's more balanced, funny enough, <laughs> in terms of both of these damage profiles. So if you're an Elemental Shaman, rejoice because you can yeah. actually scale pretty good. We're gonna place it here in the A tier because it, it deserves it. In terms of like, yeah, you see the damage profile, that's fine, you know, but damn, a lot of keys being pushed at the highest level, 27s upwards. Really, the, the the deserve it's the deserve spot for Elemental Shaman. For sure, for sure. Now, last on the list, a uh, the, the most reworked spec in World of Warcraft history. We <laughs> have to point that out. It's like wow. Every patch you need new weak cards, yeah, man. That's, that's, that's yeah. exactly what this spec is. It's it's Shadow, pretty it's pretty yeah. nuts. Shadow, Shadow Priest is still statistically the best caster in the game. But, but before you start talking about Shadow Priest, I know you played some some <laughs> Shadow Priest. And, is Shadow Priest here ranked however are we gonna rank it because of its pi or not then that you can is, talk about that's everything. that's the million dollar <laughs> question man because uh, whether you like it or not shadow priest is probably the best source of pi in a mythic plus dungeon because it is performing better overall so not you holy priest yeah, or you yeah. discipline For, priest. Nah, nah, nah. No holy priest and we no love you we is, love you it is but shadow and i think it's well deserved shadow's been you know kind of struggling in the overall performance in meta for a while and where before you would want Shadow to get a PI, now actually it brings damage, because PI wouldn't have been enough anyway. Yeah. And if you add the damage that this spec brings from the PI as well, it's clearly topping all the meters, no questions asked. Yes, yes, and it's no question, this is like the best spec right now at Mythic Plus in terms of like, you know, the keys, the damage profile, the utility, sure, everything, sure. like the whole yeah. package is there. Uh, it's like, you know, 27 and upwards. I mean, yeah, you can have an argument about single target being sucky sucky, but it's, <sighs> it's, it's, it's the, not it's as the demo lock. Okay, it's, let's it's the trend. Like yeah, yeah. And so if you look at the overall tier list, it's kind of different from last week's melee because uh, there's well, a lot yeah. more uh, spread when it comes to the to the cash meta, and I think this is very indicative of the seasonal affects of the dungeonal dungeon encounter designs where uh, playing a caster this season has never felt as punishing as it is now, and you can see like the hard casting specs a little bit lower on the list. As opposed to yeah. like, let's say the dot specs, the spread specs, or 
mage, because mage doesn't care about anything, really, if you really yeah. want to think about well, it. Unless, unless you're, you're arcane. But you know what's interesting? Let's pull up the, the sub-creation rankings, because that was the, the that was the, that really caught my eye. So if you look at sub-creation right now, like you can, <laughs> like, look at, look at poor affliction over there. Listen, we're going to make this uh, uh, disclaimer once again. We cannot place F tier, a spec that consistently clears 26 I mean, keys. it's, it's uh, 25, 26 is there, like, one or two keys lower than the top keys. Like, how, where do you want this spec to be? If not, let's even C tier that's like, okay, we're just gonna put into C tier to let it to let you know that it is the, the lowest performing, but we could just as well put it into B or A tier because it's doing 25s and 26s. And yeah. even with sub creation, this is really, really well how to explain how data works because sub creation just takes from the logs the highest cleared keys. Fire Mage apparently hasn't done high keys <laughs> enough because it's a B tier spec, but yeah. Fire Mage has the yeah. highest keys cleared period so it's yeah. kind of you hard have like to even 28 over there right so you just mentioned but it's it's also like the the, uh, the actual numbers that sub creation picks out is also like in terms of like how many of these logs are there and they rank it on that as well so this is why we don't necessarily base everything on sub creation we just take a look at it and maybe for the shits and giggles because you cannot ever put for sure affliction into f tier sure affliction players are not happy with their spec i know that but again as long as there are players playing the spec and doing 26 in time and i mean if you really <sighs> want to make this point we can just say that the affliction warlock is the only warlock spec used in mdi yeah well so, there you go there you go there's, there's that as well now looking at the warcraft logs uh um, it's a lot closer to what we have actually yes because um, Warcraft Logs obviously works over a larger period of time where it gathers its data as opposed to subcreation that just does this reset that we just had. Yeah. And it actually ranks Affliction a little bit higher than what we kind of wanted. And that's why we kind of, when we did the research, we also looked at, you know, the visual performances, see how many power infusions have been used, what the actual damage is. Because you can have an, an Affliction in a party with two Boomkins and it will probably clear higher keys than normal. <laughs> but maybe that's not really what the spec is all about, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, when we do these rankings, we also kind of check out, like, the popularity or, or presence of the, sure. of the number of logs as well. So you will you will see um, a, a lot more presence of destruction logs uh, than affliction and this is probably a symptom where as is the case with a lot of these specs the affliction mains uh, a lot of them switch to destruction the arcane mains a lot of them switch to fire and so on right yeah they did like so, some of the top mages play both fire and frost at the same time and they play with the same group so that can influence the keys yeah, as well yeah but hopefully this makes it a little bit more clear on you know how we do these rankings and this is the final image that we have for uh the meta on 10.0.7 with the range dps and mythic plus sure. as always thank you patreon for supporting the content you guys are amazing check the, link in the description to check out more and also we cannot forget curse forge you know making a, a lot of this possible click the link in the description to download the curse forge app client and install omnibar or ability team tracker to see where power all, fusion all, is all up. of the things <laughs> as well and, uh, check out the the pro am uh, charity event as well really cool it's, thing it's that's really happening cool. over there and that being said what thank up, you flame? thank you for watching the video guys and we will catch you in the next one with more more have a great weekend everybody bye i've been loving it then i still love it now still i play wow still i play wow getting better every day let me show you how Cause still i play wow still i play wow it's getting harder to stay but at the end of the day it's a guilty pleasure so just log in and play whether it's classical retail i'ma do a slash bow still i play wow